Hey guys, how's it going? Long time no see. Uh, I hope you've missed me. I've surely missed you, even you, Kevin. Um, and today we're gonna be doing something pretty exciting. We're gonna be taking 360 degree HDRIs at multiple exposures and then merging them together in Photoshop, then taking them into Cinema 4D and Redshift or Octane, whatever render engine you use, uh, and lighting a scene with them. So, you might not even know what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, um, if you don't know, for context, uh, HDRIs are used in visual effects industry, and basically they allow you to take a lighting environment, like let's say this one, uh, and then, then replicate that later on in the CG pipeline, which is really, really nice. I'm going to be using a cheap little camera. This is the Insta360 ONE X, as you can see right there. Um, I think it's like $300 on Amazon. A really nice photo. There's multiple ways to do this. You could do this with a DSLR camera uh, and take several photos at different exposures and then merge them all together. Uh, but I found that this is the most time efficient way uh, and definitely probably one of the most cheapest ways, especially if you don't already own a DSLR and a fancy tripod to set up all of the lighting. Uh, but this is definitely the fastest way. So this is the way we're going to be doing it. We will be getting all of our reflection data and our lighting data just from this in our CG scene. So, with all that, let's get started. Okay, so essentially, what we're gonna be doing is capturing our 360 degree HDRI. But we can't just take one photo, we have to take multiple photos at different exposures so that we can later get all of that different information. Because this camera realistically probably only has like five, seven stops of dynamic range. And we're gonna need upwards of 20 to get the proper lighting or else our lighting inside of CG will just look really flat. So what we got to do is just set the camera down in a proper place. It's going to fall. <laughs> Look at this. There we go. All right. Ooh, no. <laughs> nice save. Gosh. Whoa. <laughs> Does that look ridiculous? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, where were we? Yeah, so we're gonna take our several shots of exposure. We just put it on this tripod right here because it was falling down earlier. Okay, right, so whatever camera you're using, whether it's a 360 photo or you're gonna take DSLR photos and stitch them together, you wanna make sure you're shooting in manual because we're gonna have to actually control our exposure. We're gonna purposely underexpose and overexpose this photo. So what you're gonna wanna do for this, of course, is switch into manual mode. And after being blinded, uh, go ahead and drop that ISO down to the lowest number uh, possible because that will keep the least amount of noise in your image and we want a really clean image because it's going to be easier for Photoshop to merge this later on down the line. So what I'm going to be doing here is just changing the shutter speed to get different exposures. You want to go from uh, as dark as you can go so you can get the pinpoint of the sun all the way to as bright as you can go so you can fill in all those shadows with light and it won't be super noisy. So after taking four photos, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have to open them up in a image editor to kind of unwrap them because I'll show you. These are raw photos. We want the raw versions. This other stuff, ignore that. You don't want that. You want the raw. So we'll get in the raw right here. Uh, and then I'm going to open up Insta360 Studio because that's what I took these photos with. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that we have it open, let's go ahead and drag and drop those photos in. And I'm just going to pull them in like that. There we go. Sweet. Uh, so now you can see our different exposures. So I'll click on them, let them load. Uh, the really important thing with this, guys, is to make sure, like I said, you get those shadows right there. Uh, you want to make sure you get all the shadows because you don't want a lot of noise and grain. That's just going to not um, really help your quality situation out. Uh, also, you want to make sure you get the pinpoint, pinpoint of the sun uh, because that's going to give us that directional light that we're looking for. And once you're ready, just highlight them and punch export. And we're going to do original. Um, automatic horizontal correction, that's fine. Make sure you select your location that you want them to be, and then we'll open up Photoshop to merge them together. Okay, so now that you're in Photoshop, uh, it's pretty simple from here on out. Let's just go to File, Automate, and then Merge to HDRI Pro. And then we're just gonna pop up this little dialog box here, and I'm just gonna select my four HDRIs I took. You might have more than four, you might have less, Usually you get around five or six, but I was going pretty quick with this. Uh, we'll see how it looks. Okay, so once you import them, give it a couple of seconds, this dialog will pop up right here. And if you look in the bottom, and I'll slide this up so you can see, we have our different exposures down here. 
and what that really just means is that's just the different exposures that a camera's uh, viewfinder was at or it thought it was at. And then really the most important thing guys here is just click remove ghosts. That will probably help you out a little bit and keeping it a little uh, more accurate, especially if it was moving around a lot. And you must be in 32 bits. That's going to be important for later on. When we go into Cinema 4D, I'll show you why. Uh, so let's go ahead and punch OK. Just like that. It's going to merge them together, do its thing. Creating file. Photoshop likes to take a little bit of time to do these things. Um, depending on how many photos you have, it could take really long or really quick. Uh, for me, only four. Not too bad. Also, the remove ghosting takes a little bit longer. Okay. There we go. Having it loading up right there. Gotta love it. And there we go. <laughs> um, you're gonna get uh, some interesting results. Let's just zoom in right here. Wow, it's really choppy. Uh, no, do not do that. Uh, this is just because the camera was shaking and we have some chromatic abrasion. You can remove all this, especially if you're working on a very professional production. Uh, it'd probably be in your best interest too because you don't want to see all this craziness in your reflections. However, for this little YouTube video, it should suffice for the purposes. So you might be thinking, if you're observant, uh, that sky looks blown out. And it is. That's because this screen is only displaying around seven stops of dynamic range because we're in Rec. 709. But really, we have more information that it just physically cannot display that. So it just blew it out. Really, the data is there. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's create an adjustment layer. And let's do exposure. Uh, if you think I'm lying, we'll sh I'll show you right here. So let's take the exposure down. Look at that. We pull it all the way down. And let's zoom in right here. And look, you can see that light source right there, our sun is still blown out. And that is what we want. That is why we merge multiple photos together to get that pinpoint lighting that will be really, really helpful for us. And if we crank the exposure back up, you might also notice, let's zoom in right here. If you're into photography, you know that your shadows have a lot of noise in them. Um, these are really just artifacts. But in this photo, we don't really have any noise in our shadows. And that's because we took uh, an exposure for those shadows and now we've merged it all together. So if you were to just take one photo just to get no noise in your shadows, you would get this image. And if you were to just take one photo just to get your highlights, you would get this image. However, really, it did not look like this at all. It was really bright and we could still see the sun at the same time. However, our screen can't display that. That's not important because we're not using it to display our screen. We're using it to bounce lighting inside of Cinema 4D, which we're going to export to. Really, probably the best way to do this file save as save on your computer. Okay, make sure you're doing an open EXR because this is the only format that can hold the 32 bit floats that we need. So, yeah, just click open EXR. If you click um, JPEG or anything else, you're going to be losing data. Your light won't, your lighting won't look as good as it should. So, just keep that in mind. It'll be flat and ugly. And no one likes that in CG. So, once we export it, I'll fire up uh, Cinema 4D and Redshift and I'll show you kind of just like what to expect. Okay, so we have Cinema 4D and Redshift opened up. Um, you can see right here, we have this little sphere uh, right here and you can see how the stitching didn't do too well right there. That's fine. Uh, you're not gonna use this for uh, as, as a backplate. You're not gonna use your HDR as a backplate. You're gonna use your video or your whatever else you have, a green screen as your backplate. Really, uh, you can see I bumped up my exposure here. It might come in a little dark. Just kind of bump it up to what you think looks good. You can get really complicated with that kind of stuff by using color checkers and exposure meters. But of course, today, we're keeping it simple. Um, and then you can see, look, we're reflecting our environment in this. And for Redshift, it's pretty easy. You just do alpha channel replace and then enable backplate. And then you can take your footage in and it will be in the background. And you 3D track and everything. Uh, and that's a whole nother lesson, but I wanted to show you all this because it's a little bit of a convoluted process uh, to get a 360 degree HDRI. So I kind of thought this was important. Um, and I love how Redshift handles it. It is really, really great. So with all that being said, I think this is the end of the lesson. I hope you all enjoyed it. You can see we have that specular highlight right there from the sun, which is amazing. We would not be getting that with just a regular... Um, a, just a regular HDRI or just a regular non HDR, just a regular 360 photo. We were not getting that pinpoint lighting. Everything would be blown out. 
Uh, so that's really, really nice. This is super powerful and super awesome that you can take a 360 degree uh, high dynamic range photo and bracket them together on a pretty cheap budget. So just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, check out my website. I have my rendering with Redshift class out now. Uh, it's on sale, actually. So go check the link below. If you ever wanted to learn CG, get into CG, uh, or just want to learn how to use Redshift, I would definitely recommend checking that class out. And again, guys, thank you all so much for the support. We're going to be cranking out a lot of videos coming up, some really exciting stuff as well. Um, so I'm really happy for that. With all that being said, guys, thanks for watching. Peace out.